Check out Nightlife Barbecue and Grill in two locations on St. Kitts at Buck. Hey, Webmaster here. I stay connected to Freedom with the Freedom SKN app. Simply search for the Freedom app in the Android's Play Store or the Apple's App Store and download it. Enjoy world-class radio at its best. Anytime, anywhere. Become a Freedom apper today. RIA Easy Money Transfer Limited, located on West Independence Square Street, Bastyr St. Kitts, and the Solomon Arcade Nevis, offers you safe and reliable transfers at great low rates and fees to 507,000 locations worldwide. And for even more ease of doing business, we home deliver and direct bank deposits in selected countries. So if anytime you want to send money to family, friends, and loved ones at RIA, we've got you covered with over 30 years of experience moving money quickly efficiently and securely across 160 countries give us a call at 465-3325 in st kitts or 469-3325 in nevis opening hours monday to friday 8 a.m to 4 p.m 8 30 in nevis and on saturdays 9 a.m to 1 a.m ria easy money transfer limited The St. Kitts Credit Union is making mortgages easy. Becoming a homeowner, whether purchasing or building, has never been easier. The SKCU is here to help. Apply online via our website, www.skccu.com, or schedule an appointment today with one of our friendly loan officers to discuss your options. St. Kitts Credit Union, the best place to borrow, the best place to save. If you live here in St. Kitts and your tank on here, there's only one place that you should be. They'll be driving in the evening and you need some fuel. Go straight to Delta. Don't be a fool. Get your cooking gas. Petroleum needs ULSD. Everyone in the region is shouting Go Delta. Premium gasoline and a fully stocked C score. So there's only one place it should be Delta Petroleum, baby. It's 1.36 right here in the studios of Freedom FM. It's time for SU St. Kitts and Nevis. Today is the 16th of April, 2024. And back by popular request, we do have Pastor Duport here in the studios with us this afternoon. Pastor Duport, you seem to come at very serious times. You realize? It, it seems like, I don't know. It seems like this is planned, right? Hmm. As God would have it, because no one can chastise. Well, I'm just responding because of what you said. Mm -hmm. No one can chastise like God can. Jehovah can and he has his servants, his ministers, especially those who are hearkening to his voice and those who are willing to go forward <coughs> to declare what thus saith the word of God. And so I say good afternoon to you, my dear Jamie, and to all who might be listening at this time. Okay. So we too are checking in and saying good afternoon. So whether you are listening via the radio or our social media platforms, Facebook or YouTube, we say thank you for joining us this afternoon. Pastor Duport is here to share with us this afternoon. He is going to share with us in his usual frank and very open manner whatever it is that God has placed 
on his heart to share with us this afternoon. But before we do that, we do have a bit of an announcement, and I'll give Pastor Jupport the opportunity to to make that announcement at this time. Thank you very much. But even before I make that announcement, Praise God. Even before I make that particular announcement, I would like to briefly just thank all who participated, who supported, praise God, at services that we have had, who made financial contributions pertaining to certain things that we have had, even spiritually, to mark the 30th anniversary of my pastorship and since that work was started. And so I give God praise and thanks for all of you. And at another time, I'll go into more detail or details in terms of thanking you. And so, I am glad, with God's help, to be given the privilege, after having two nights of revival services, right here in the studio of Freedom, which was part of the many activities that we had to celebrate and to mark the 30th anniversary. And I want to say that I'm very passionate about God and the things that are of God. And so I have been praying and hoping that it would not just be for those two nights which were held, but that if Given the opportunity, I would not have minded having similar services. And so I was given the green light by freedom that it will be in order to have a, a revival service of that same nature and beyond every second Tuesday in a month. Starting from God's Spare Life next month. So I encourage you to stay tuned. Yes, have your ears open. Something good is going to be happening. And as we get even some more financial assistance. It can even go to two times per month. But for now, it will be once per month, starting next month, February, the second Tuesday in every month, from 7 p.m., to 9 p.m. Of course, I'll be having different persons coming to support in prayer, in praise and worship, in the reading of the word, and so on and so forth. And as much as I like to preach and teach the word, I would even give way at times for someone else who in my spirit I would have to come and bring the word and listen to that person. I say, as the Spirit leads, because I love to preach, I love to teach the word of God, I just, <laughs> I don't, I can't even find words, even though I know words, but it's more inside of me than speaking it. And so I want to thank God 
for being here this afternoon. And uh, to be honest, Sister Jamie, if you, well, I'll put it this way. I'm here with mixed feelings. I'm here like I want to preach and like I don't want to preach. I'll be honest with you. I am here feeling pains, not physical pain. Heart pain, spiritual pain. It's more to pray and to think and to try to analyze and try to interpret. as to what is happening in our federation, and especially in St. Kitts. And it pains me to that of when I look back and I saw in my ear and even years after that, how young men occupied themselves, generally speaking, doing something worthwhile. Occupying themselves in sporting Activities. Not that we are not having sporting activities now, but what I'm trying to say is that you hardly had any young man just going about being idle and disrespectful, out of order, much more to reach to that of killing. And so it pains me. And the question is, what can we do? What can be done? Because, of course, we have to talk. But I think it's something more than talking. This is something spiritual. And last night, not that we wait until something happens to pray, but sometimes you get more spiritually angry and command and demand things. So there's a ministry that, with God's help, is headed and led by myself, where we meet online every Monday evening with persons from overseas connected as well. And we went into prayer. I mean with a vexation of spirit. And I am calling on persons in our federation and beyond to take more time out to pray and intercede on behalf of the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis in a way like we have never, ever done before. Because I am not the one to believe, in spite of the situation, that it's all over. I still serve a true and living God, Jehovah, and nothing is impossible with him. And I believe a person or persons can do as much 
as they want, but not as long as they want. And I believe that if we can follow 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. I think for too long we have been saying this like a recitation. Like when you're growing up in Sunday school and you have to memorize. And everybody clap you, especially if you didn't make a mistake. And so we don't take this verse like other scriptures seriously. If we had to be obedient to God and the word of God, especially and in particularly those of us who profess and call ourselves children of God, I say to you and to myself that the state and the situation that our federation is in, our country, our island is in, it would not have been like this, but we have been careless. We have been a dull, sloth kind of people, a lawless kind of people from a church standpoint and have been putting the cart before the horse and have had different motives and not the motives that are spiritual and are godly. Too many of us as believers, as children of God, so we say, are too much after the affairs and the things of this world. And of course, very pompous and haughty and prideful. But I want to put before you some things here. It's about for you to assert yourself, to check yourself, to do some stock taking, for us to stop, look, and listen. I have two categories of words. Some of the words are going to be under that of light, and some of them are going to be under that of darkness. So the two headings, one is light and one is darkness. You see, I'm concerned. And again, I say, I think we just go full speed. We are just concerned ever so often about ourselves, I and I and I alone. And in doing that, we damage others. We pay little or no attention to others. We don't feel anything on behalf of others because it is not you or it is not me. And so, I want to know this afternoon and be honest to yourself because this exercise, and I want you to pay attention because I'm concerned about humanity. I'm concerned about human beings and the state and the condition of human beings. 
to pay attention. You don't have to wait until the King of England or the President of the United States to have some speech to pay attention because they themselves really need persons to speak to them, especially from a godly standpoint. And so, let me start with the darkness first. Tell me if you are in this category. Spite, hatred, malice, lies, theft, arrogance, unforgiveness, grudgery, lawlessness, immorality, and of course, some of these words are related or interrelated as the case may be. Wickedness. Just to name a few. And under light, love. And I want to use brief moments to share on love this afternoon, which is so sadly lacking in our community, communities, the nation, the federation, the world. So the light, love, peace, <laughs> joy, patience, humility, gentleness, meekness, Forgiveness. And I use this word broadly. Consideration. So take time out and consider. In some cases, you would not have to consider because you know exactly which bracket or brackets you are under. And I'm glad that the Lord led me, as simple as that might have sound or sounded, in terms of those words I mentioned on the darkness and on the light. This is the crux of the matter. If you are allowing those words and others to have possessed you and controlled you, why our federation, our nation is like this? Because it means that you are filled with evil. And having said evil, those that were under darkness are of evil. And those that were under light are of good. And good comes from Jehovah. And evil comes from the devil. Our chief enemy. Lucifer, who came. As the word of God says in John 10 and 10, part of verse John 10 and 10, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So when you function and operate in that darkness section, you are under the direction of the devil, of evil. And too many of you in this 
our beloved Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis, with some of you just pay lip service to in relation to that of love, are of the devil. And because for a long while some of you have been of the devil, you have breathed devilish children. You have breathed evil children. So from and before the time of con conception, evil was already dominating that fetus. Yes. So it came right back from the root in the belly for some, not all. And this can be, in some cases, why we are seeing some of these results today with young murderers. Because you were not in a position. Look at the age and ages. And then when you look at the age and ages of the murderers, you look at the age and ages of the parents. And then you go further to look and see and remind yourself as to the behavioral pattern of these young parents, who for them, and a lot of them, not all, their child or children has never ever done anything wrong, even when they would have murdered. So you're filled with darkness. Let me say this, that when we walk on this planet Earth, hear me, hear me. When we walk on this planet Earth, when the sole of our feet tread or trod upon this Earth, depending on who we are, what we are possessed with, what we are controlled with, how we live our lives, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Just like how God told Moses, where thou standest is holy ground, when I or whoever so believe in holiness and righteous living and believe in good doings when we tread upon the earth wherever. And we must believe that and know this depending on our relationship with Jesus Christ, with God the Father, our Creator. Every place we put our feet on is holy ground because we are trying to live a holy life and then those who are of evil and of darkness and of the devil where they tread their feet is evil grounds so we are in a battle a spiritual warfare good versus evil and evil versus good coming from an out of human beings. Because God, Jehovah, the creator, has given us a choice to choose. And you, whoever you are, have chosen evil. You have chosen wickedness. You have chosen the devil. And this is why our country, our federation is like this, 
because it wasn't like this before. And when I say before, I am not talking about like two, three years ago or four years ago or because some government or some set of people came into office five, ten years ago or two years ago or three years ago. That is not what I'm saying. I'm speaking about for a good while, for decades. Because for whatever reason and at whatever time, some set of children did not inhale or take in the teaching of their parents or grandparents as the case may be. So there came a breaking down, notwithstanding that some can get some very good training and follow idle company or companies and behave in an evil manner. I know that I'm not going to be as long as other times. What we need, among other things, is love. And love, L-O-V-E, is the strongest word in the world. Love. Simple sounding, but the most powerful word in the world. I didn't say powerful name, I said powerful word in the world. That is what so many are lacking. But what kind of, kind of love? I'm speaking about Jehovah's love, God's love. For in First John, Four, and part of verse 16, it says that God is love. Jehovah is love. Now putting L-O-V-E on a wall or on a board, it's dead. It is dead. It don't even know that L-O-V-E is there. So love is about demonstrating it, practicing it, putting it into motion, putting it into action, showing it among each other, showing care. I say that is sadly lacking. Instead, it's like we want to be like wolves and tigers to devour each other, to destroy each other. No love, no care, no concern. We always, generally speaking, want to use damaging words towards people instead of words to edify, to uplift, to encourage. And so God's word in 1 John 4 and part of verse 16 said, God is love. Jehovah is love. And so if you have God inside of you, Jehovah inside of you, inside of me, residing in us, then obviously he is in control because he is love. So what would come out of us is love. So we'll have, as it were, no control. Because love would have possessed us, manipulated us, taken us over. And so where love is, 
There can't be hatred. They can't accord. They have no relationship. And where love is, and I always see love as the mother of some of the other fruit of the spirit of God. So where love is, there's going to be peace. You can't be warlike if you have love in your heart. Jehovah's love in your heart, Jah love in your heart. It's impossible. Where love is, then you'll be humble. Where love is, you'll be forgiving. You'll be gentle. You'll be meek. You'll be tolerant. Because that is what love offers. Branches off. In first John, this time four and eighteen, I just quoted from verse 16 of first John 4, part of it, God is love. And first John 4 and 18 speaks to that of perfect love. So there's no imperfection in love. There's no discoloration in love. Love is perfect because of who it is and what it is and who it comes from. Perfect love. Casteth away fear. So if we have the love of God in us, We would not be fearful to approach persons irrespective of what they have done to us because perfect love removes fear. What I'm trying to say, when we have God's love dominating us, controlling us, taking us over, that is in control. So we lack that in our nation, in our federation. What I have found is that so many persons encourage is wrong. So many persons encourage the children to do wrong. So instead of the chastising their young ones, they would, for instance, go by a school because of some incident, do not want to know what went down, what went on, and they start to curse the teacher, teachers, and even want to fight. We are as maybe in a situation a child or children might have already challenged the teacher or teachers pertaining to that of fighting. I mean, let me tell you something. There are some homes here in St. Kitts, and I usually just have to shake my head and pray. There is no one at all in some of these homes in St. Kitts and Nevis, and especially St. Kitts, just like some homes in other parts of the world, where nothing easily that is good is practiced. Everybody, everything comes out of such a home is evil. Dirty remarks, pro profane language, cursing, pulling down somebody. I'm telling you, I go around and I hear, I say, what kind of family is that? What kind of home is that? Corrupt. Too many corrupt homes are in our federation. Because you're bent on practicing wickedness and evil. The Bible says in Matthew 5 and 44, speaking about love, 
And this is showing you the extent to which we should take love. It says, love your enemies. Don't tell some people that. Do good to those that hate you and pray for those which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For so persecuted as it continues, they the prophet which were before you. Love your enemies. Again, I said this is the extent. So love has no boundary. Unconditional love. No boundary. No breadth. No width. No height. No depth. And God is able. If you and I go after it. To be so possessed and controlled with love. That. You would want to know, how come you're smiling so much and mean well so much towards that person who presents themselves as your enemy? So there are going to be enemies out there, but you don't have to retaliate. You don't have to get even. You see, some of us, think that we grow weak when we be peaceful, when we be loving, when we be forgiving. That's the time when we are strong. Amen. That is the time when we are strong. That is the time when we are light shining like Matthew 5 and 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your Good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Love draws. Love is like a magnet. I'm telling you, you'll be surprised to know what God working through you and me, operating in you and me can do to even the murderer when he looks at you walking down the street. Never seen somebody like that. Even the peace is not written on you in terms of a word. And love is not written on you. The fragrance of love and peace and joy. Oh, glory be to God. And gentleness and meekness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Would scent up the atmosphere and the surrounding where you are in or I am in because God, Jehovah, is not limited with his love. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. This is not a proportionate love. It's an all-sufficient love. Hallelujah. God, you're so great. I love the Lord. And if I love the Lord, I have to love people. Because First John, going back to First John 4 and 20 says, if a man says, hear this, if a man says he loves God, meaning human being, any human being, he loves God and hate or hateth his brother, he is a liar. For how can he say he loved God whom he hath not seen and hates his brother or his sister who he sees every day? Oh, glory be to God. So it starts with us because God has already deposited that in us. Oh, yes. So we have to demonstrate it. We have to show it. Even though we are right, sometimes because of the love you have to take wrong for peace sake, which I say comes out of the bowel of love. Yes. How, and this is what I don't understand. Coming back to some of us who profess and call ourselves children of God. Let me say this. Let me say this. You see, some of you, you think because that 
For instance, I profess to be a child of God, ordained as a pastor, ordained as an apostle, that I must come here or go behind some pulpit and don't speak out against wrong. So people as children of God are doing wrong, and because I'm a child of God, I must not speak out against it. Well, God is no respecter of persons. And if I am his child, I certainly, believe me, I am no respecter of persons. When I am preaching and I'm teaching, if it is me, let it be me, even though I don't preach it. Much more for you. And so we have people who claim to be in the body of Christ, even some pastors and apostles and prophets and prophetesses and all sorts of names that some of us mean more to us. The names mean more to us. Dr. This, Pastor Dr. This, Apostle Dr. This, Bishop This, those things mean more to us than showing love to people because right here in the church of the living God in St. Kitts, there are persons who are children of God who say they are children of God, who are not speaking to each other, who have unforgiveness in their heart. So if we can't show love, who will show love? If we, as children of God, don't set that example, who will set it? You hear what the word of God said? I quoted a while ago from Matthew 5 and 16. Let your light so shine. So God is looking for a people in every dispensation, every generation, in every city, in every island, in every country to set that example. Praise God of love and joy and peace and gentleness and meekness and temperance and long-suffering and humility and patience, you name it, hallelujah, so that others can look at us and take pattern. Oh, yes. And so a lot of times we are to be blamed, not starting just today, but over the years because we want to behave like the world. We want to be like the Joneses. We see those people in the world have the best fashionable vehicle. We want it too. We are not after souls any longer. Oh no, we are not after souls any longer. No, we are after this world's goods. We are after pride. We are after position. That's what so many are after. We must show love. Do I have time still, Sister Jane? Yeah, you actually have nine minutes left. Praise nine God. Minutes I don't left. want to be out of order in your radio station, your studio. <laughs> you Praise won't God. be. Hallelujah. And so, if a man says he loves God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. And let me tell you something. That means there are a lot of liars without telling a lie. Who have no love in their heart and they are saying that they love God. They are paying lip service to that of loving God. And there is a good example in the book of St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. From, if you have to read from verse 25 to about 37, the word of God speaks to that of uh, the Good Samaritan. Yes, thieves on the Jericho road. And the priest, hear this. You see, God's word is God's word. The priest, you know, the person is supposed to be churchy, religious. The thieves beat up the man. They stripped him, you know. They were not satisfied. This is how these thieves and robbers and murderers behave. They want to get all of you. 
So the thieves stripped the man of his garments and beat him up. But this is the part whereby the priest, the churchman, came down, recognized the man in his pain, in his suffering, and went on the other side, passed by. Then the word of God says, likewise a Levite, which is like an assistant to the priest came by, did the same thing, walked by on the other side. But the Good Samaritan, why he's called the Good Samaritan? Because he did something good. He did something pleasing to God. He went and he bound up those wounds with whatever cloth and material and what have you and what have you to ensure that the man is okay and then set him on his journey. And he even told him, if he is in need, he gave him some money, and he told him if he's in need of anything, he can send to let him know, and he would send it to him. That's the heart of love. That's the heart of compassion, not just to preach, not just to teach the word, not just to conduct a Bible study, not just to conduct a prayer meeting, not just to be called bishop, not just to be called apostle, not just to be called priest, not just to be called pastor, but it's more the demonstration of the love and being a child of God. Oh yes, it's not about position. And so I pray that with God's help, we would have a turnaround in the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis. I am calling and I am continue to call on whatever remnant we have in St. Kitts from the east, west, north, or south. Let's take more time out to come together to pray in unison, in faith believing, and things can happen because our sword is greater than the weapon sword. Our sword, which is the word of God, and prayer comes from the word of God. Oh, God is looking for a people. Hallelujah. Let's search out each other. Stop with all this lot of fun and fear in the houses of God. Just as far as I concerned, in some cases, farming fool. Things that has no power. One lot of stuff happens in the houses of God. All kind of things are introduced. Sometimes to keep membership and all kind of things. You think the devil ain't glad for that? Because no power is in those kind of things. God wants us to preach the uncompromising word of God to declare the word. To pray under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And things will happen. And let us stop have animosity towards each other and unforgiveness and looking for popularity and all kind of devilish pattern of behavior and self-righteous pattern of behavior. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear, I done. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Jupuat, for coming and sharing with us this afternoon. I want to thank all of you who tuned in and listened. Those of you who wrote on the Freedom One and the Freedom Facebook page, we weren't able to share your comments this afternoon, but thank you nonetheless for joining us this afternoon.
So this afternoon's issues program, as you may have gathered, because Pastor Jupert said, you know, he would be here a little shorter this afternoon, is going to be shorter this afternoon. We are going to close off the live part of the, the program at this point, and we will bring to you an issues program, a rebroadcast of an issues program featuring, I think it was a groundings program, featuring Junie Liburd. The Honorable Sam Condo, Dwyer Astefan, and Duncan Big Lice Watley. So we're going to bring that to you in the final half an hour of the program, and we're going to do that now. Cleared out. It was so sad to see that we are putting in so much money to different things, $75 million for gangs, this and that. And you say, you can't put five governors of the hospital. You can't get oxygen. Who is applying the oxygen? Who is applying the oxygen? And so these are the things that we're going to be mindful of. That these guys are not looking at the bigger picture of the country itself. To me, it's an individual thing. It has become individualistic. Well, if I do this, I go mash up. I ain't going to power. I, and that is not why we put them in power. We put you to be servants to the people so that we would be able to live better lives. 600 million, I didn't realize that what you're saying. US. To build a prison. The, you, the application is, the Chinese company will issue 4,000 citizenships. You will apply to the Chinese company for the citizenship. You will pay the Chinese company 4,000 at $175,000 each is 700 million. And they told me, the company told me that they will issue at least 4,000 citizenships. But, well, you, you know what? They got, sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, but I listen to you, but you know what? $600 million is? US. You understand? And so I am saying. You put a multiplier of 10 on that. Mm. That's $6 billion in our economy, Duncan, over the next 10 years. And, 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 and the point I'm making is, you know, this, we have peace and we're working towards having peace. My thing, this is how I look at it. If you have peace and the program is working, it means that less people should be going to jail. So why we really want to spend six hundred million on a prison? No, it's not six hundred million on a prison. Wow. No. no, 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 no. The prison, the prison is going to cost maybe fifty million. You know, US. So where does money go? In? The Chinese company. What are you telling me? Well, that, which, so, that is so, exactly what so, I'm so telling then, you. So do I? So I am telling you, it's six million you're spending on the on the thing because all the thing we get to know that the prison is the prison out of that. So that's no, why you get, you get the prison, and you you could get a nine months in it. This was three years in it. Because, yes, it costs 50 to build, but it was going to join, and that is what it costs. We have something called the Sustainable Growth Fund. Uh -huh. They have the Alternative Investment Fund, okay? Which does a special project. But under the Sustainable Growth Fund, you make your application to the government. Mm. You pay your money to the government. So you could do this as a special project, which is a government project, and you pay your money to the government. And whatever expenses the government incurs, in having the prison designed and built and paying commissions to people who bring in applicants. The average 600 million US dollars, which goes into the economy of St. Kitts and Nevis, mm. you could take 5,000 of your young citizens, or not so young, who are entrepreneurs, <coughs> want to be entrepreneurs, and give each one of them a grant of 25,000 US dollars and put them in a business nursery. Mm. And you're still left with 500 million to build hospitals, to build infrastructure, for food safety, water safety, energy safety, and true empowerment of the people. But that is not their priority. Their priority is making other people rich and powerful. And this is why you say, and I said it in my last commentary, I have to hold all of them accountable. They don't only, they have not only failed as a team to lead the country, but their priorities have been twisted. And now the Deputy Prime Minister and the Premier, as part of the arrangement, have a very narrow window of opportunity to regain their credibility and to stop this nonsense from taking place. And in fact, to stop those, both of those projects that I mentioned. And they are being on test now for us to see if they will do that. And this is why it is so important for us to go to an election and let us hear them say what they're going to do about those projects. Yeah. You see, and, and do uh, I... Uh, just, just before you go, sir, I just want to alert. We were told, we were informed that the Facebook is not live. We're mm. not seeing it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. The guy who set it up, 
or technical um, guy, John James. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get him, but I can't get him. So what I'm doing right now is using my phone to record it live on Facebook. And uh, so, so far we have about 150, and I just signed it. Yeah, so it's about going five live minutes now. Ago. Okay. So um, it's going good, and I don't know what happened, why it wasn't set up originally, mm -hmm. but uh, I guess it could be a technical glitch, but we're live on my phone. So okay. those of you out there watching and complaining at, at that time, at least we have a resolution to, to, to this problem. At least problem. we have one. Yes, we do have a resolution. <laughs> And it's not a dissolution. Yes. So. <laughs> All right, and, and, and just to add, uh, mm -hmm. Dwyer and, and, and Lice, Big Lice, uh, mm -hmm. that is why this government by itself, these three parties meeting continuously will not address the problem. We need a wider participation. We need to bring on, bring, make this a national development. Mm -hmm. The government has failed and the government cannot solve the problem that they have created. They cannot add to the uh, solution of the problem. And so to meet, to, to, to postpone and to meet again, serves no purpose. In, in fact, Les just said it, that Sean said the, 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 the gulf has, has widened, it is intractable. The, the, the Prime Minister said he's not going to surrender his, his, his uh, constitutional um, responsibility mm -hmm. and obligations. So it means that we are not going to look at by themselves, they, they cannot produce a solution. And so this, 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 this has to be widened into a national participation, uh, bringing in civil society, all the other parties, the Labour Party, the NRP Party, in, in, in order to address this matter. And uh, eventually, going back to the people for uh, a, a, a solution to this problem. So what we are doing really is, is wasting time. You mean right now? No, 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 no. <laughs> not the government. Uh, we are in time meeting at the Met on, 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 on Wednesday. They were supposed to meet on Monday, they put out the Wednesday. Then, then, they, they, then they put out the Wednesday meeting to... Who put them to, off? Who, put, who did they put in off? Well, the, the, the Prime Minister is yeah, the person in charge. The Prime Minister is the one putting off. So, you know. so, so the country must not continue to accept this as... as, I, as I agree 100%. That's why I said, if they don't do something within the next week or two, yeah. we have to, as, 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 as a country, people, yeah. a collective. Yeah. It's in our interest. Yeah, we are yeah. the ones who are paying the yeah. price for this. This is answer. clearly a leadership crisis. You know, leadership matters in these things. Especially leadership by the people. Mm -hmm. Because the citizen, as Obama and others have said, is the most important and responsible role in a, dem in a democratic society. You know, and the two parties are campaigning vigorously against each other on the streets, house to house. The parties yeah, within the, yeah. the construct yeah. and on and, and social media, yeah. not just vigorously, but bitterly and, and then, venomously. And then we hear buzzwords like unity. I mean, where's the unity? I mean, these things were just used to sort of confuse and to, um, you know. Well, you know, let, you know, let me ask you guys unity. something. Um, both, all three of you have been instrumental in the formation of the team unity um, construct, mm -hmm. right? Um, when you were doing what you were doing in 2015 mm -hmm. to give it life and to bring about a change, to change the change, mm -hmm. as we say, mm -hmm. um, did you see anything like this happening? Did you get any feeling then that um, it would head down in a disaster zone as it is happening now? Or you fully expected that they would stick to the issues that they formulated during the election and they wage with their campaign manifesto and so on, all the things that they put in there about good governance, transparency, accountability, et cetera, et cetera. Did you foresee that they would not have delivered after seven years? I think that that's really a, a, a rhetorical question, Junior. I mean, the people would have never gotten into this. I mean, you, 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 see, you saw the country bought into this. Right. People believed this. Mm -hmm. People thought that this was the way to go. Mm -hmm. they, they, they thought we, we, we wanted an opportunity to make a, a fresh start and a new beginning, mm -hmm. a new dispensation, all the, all the thing about good governance and all of that. But that why, people, why, why hasn't it happened then? Be, because the, the leadership was deceptive, especially mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the, the leader who, 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 who is Dr. Harris, the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. the, thing uh, that, the thing that started to inject skepticism in my mind, actually it began shortly after the 2015 elections, when the leadership group of Team Unity, of which Sam and I were members at the time, 
met at the team unity headquarters at the top of fourth street to discuss campaign finance matters from the 2015 election and the matter was deferred i remember being told that the prime minister who was there had to leave the meeting at quarter to ten and i had raised the matter and some wanted to have some input on the matter. Mm -hmm. The chairman at the time of the proceedings was Mr. Sidney Osborne. He said the Prime Minister had to leave at quarter to ten. I don't think Sam got a chance that night to speak on the matter. And the meeting was adjourned to a date um, on which Sam would be absent from St. Kitts. Mm -hmm. And that matter, as far as I am concerned, was never discussed again. I don't think I ever went to any other meetings. But from that point, I started to become increasingly uncomfortable with the arrangement because I thought that accountability, which is something that was given high priority, should radiate from the top down. And there didn't seem to be that much interest in that happening and I started to have my doubts. I had said before the change of government when Richard Keynes and I used to be on the radio that we would keep their feet to the fire just as we did with the Labour Party even more so because they promised to be better. We did as we said we would do, I certainly did and you know there's no good deed that goes unpunished so you get cussed out for it and abused and call all kind of things but I started to feel uncomfortable earlier clock with this arrangement. Well, <laughs> I think I might take a different turn to this, what you just asked. I remember back in the day when I did voices on, 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 on the other station, I always said that a unified government or a coalition government in case like this one wasn't meant to last that was my my thinking my thinking was that it was created to get rid of the then prime minister that is what i i thought it was then created and so i knew that it wouldn't last but when this unity came into into being they gave us the impression that things were so good and they were going to bring changes that we were looking for. Remember, we were talking about, as you say, integrity, freedom of information, all these things they said they would bring to the fore. So I, got, I think people got excited and said, well, this is what we, we, we're voting for, because we really want these things to be enshrined in our constitution and so forth. But as Dreyer said, earlier clock, the wheels fell off. Because it seemed as though the, the, the man who was given charge of being the leader had his own ulterior motives. And so he started to go down the road, which he had planned as far as I'm concerned, and, and, and just was fooling everybody. And I recognized that early, and so in 2017, 2016, 2017, 2016 or 2017 is when I started to agitate. When I sang the song, we didn't vote for that, because I recognized early why no, this is not what we voted for. And so, yes, we did uh, what we had to do at the time. I personally wanted, and people always kill me for this, but I'm going to say it until, I wanted to see the back of Denzel Douglas. And so I was willing to do whatever it takes to see the back of Denzel Douglas. But it's the same thing now. I will do whatever it takes to see the back of Timothy Harris. Because as far as I'm concerned, it's six or one hour, does not the next. And I am telling you on this radio station, if we get rid of Denzel Douglas and, and, and Timothy Harris, our politics would be much better. Our so, politics so would be much you better. you don't see any resolution in the current uh, disposition, how things are going right now. Do you think they'd be able to resolve it? Because they all keep speaking about a greater unity, a bigger unity, a real unity. And... It seems if the words don't match the, the actions. Who's saying that? Let me tell you what it is. 
Give me say the greater unity because he's trying to sell the idea that everybody come from the other parties, come to PLP, and that is unity. John and Mark could probably put an argument, unity, because they are thinking CCM and PAM would have to form together, to form government. That is, the, that is where we are now, you know. No single party right now have an outright advantage in forming the government. Labour is gaining grounds, but at the same time, you ask the question, can they gain six? And so that is the whole dynamics of our politics right now, that we would go down, and even if we have elections, as we're calling for, I believe that when we have elections, it can take some negotiations to see who would form government, because how I see it, nobody has a clear mandate. Now, uh, my personal perception has to think, and that is why I'm saying that, the, the, the Labour Party now must galvanize, regroup, we don't have group, they have already regroup, mobilize their people to demonstrate that we have what it takes. Because there are some seats in Labour that you know are sure. There are some good, excited candidates. But the point is we want to see a collective whole that yes, this part, this Labour Party would be willing to govern the country. But as it is right, right now, if you have to divide the people, and you see people doing all kinds of maths on Facebook, we can't get a clear mandate based on our assumptions. But we know things could change because it's politics. Things could change. So, but my thing is that people always put that to me, that you put them in. And everybody put in the government. You know, I vote for Labour already when they want to, I put them in. I, I, I vote for Pam when they want to, I put them in. I mean, that is, that is the nature of politics. You're going to vote, and somebody going to win, and somebody going to lose. But it, don't, it doesn't mean that if you vote for government and they're doing nonsense, that you should just stay quiet because you put them in. No. If you care about your country, then you get them out. If you recognize what they're doing is wrong, you get them out. Yes, I put them in, and I realize they're going the wrong path. So my job now is to educate people and let them realize that the politics is beyond the individual that we vote for. It's about us. And if they're not doing what the people want, it's time for them to go. And in this case, I don't see any resolution in this unity thing. If even the they said they're going to stay together for whatever it is, whatever reason, it wouldn't be a productive situation. All right. Sam, you wanted to win. Yeah, yeah I wanted to, to just add to, to that because you were asking if, if people saw it. People didn't see it. I mean, take, take somebody like the speaker, uh, the, the, the first speaker, uh, Franklin Brand. Franklin Brand was... A major, played a major part in this thing. He was made Speaker of the National Assembly. And um, after 11 months, Franklin Banner said that, no, I, I, don't, I don't want to be part of it. Mm -hmm. and, and you had a number of senior officials, the, 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 the chair of Social Security, mm -hmm. Richard Bowie, who said that she couldn't continue with the government. A number of officials in legal circles and in, in business and speaker the house. In fact, when the speaker decided, after 11 months that he wanted to go. Mm. I said to him, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, wait, hold on a little bit. This is just 11 months. And he said, he said um, this is sufficient, Sam. I've seen enough to know that I don't want to be part of this anymore. And then I said to him, but you know, if you, if you stay on for another month, you'll be able to get a pension for life and so on. I think you. He said, I don't need a pension, Sam. I need peace of mind, I need a good country. I'm not going to stay here with this. I said, well, he said, I don't need a pension. I said, you don't need a pension? Uh, maybe that could be um, some money, some extra money you have to treat your, your, your grandchildren and for ice cream. He said, no, that isn't what it is about, Sam. It is about a better country mm -hmm. and I will not stay here. You had the, 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 like I said, the chairman of Social Security who, who, who was appointed in, 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 in 2015, who decided that she couldn't stay. And no matter people, I mean, I mean, people only talking about self and Dwyer and Bigness and what has on. But a whole host of people left within a year. Decided that they didn't want to, to, to continue. But I'm, 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 I'm just addressing this, this, this thing as if, if people knew that this was happening. People had no, no, no idea. But of course, it seems that if, looking back now, that this was all part of the modus operandi of them. 
this was part of his plan, which, which uh, of course, we didn't see. But, I, mean, I mean, people thought that we, we should have seen it and, and we should have known. But, but, you know, we thought that, that, that Tim's, you know, youthful exuberance and aspiration was, was in the best interest of the country. But we were quite wrong. We also thought that being a combination of different political interests, there would be natural checks and balances, each exercising on the other. And that did not happen. In fact, Tim took up all the oxygen in the room, and next thing you know, he was there, Gulliver, and the others were essentially Lilliputians. Mm. That's what happened. And, and, and one of the things I want to add, because Big Lights was making the, the, the point, uh, people are saying now that, uh, you know, well, they have become disenchanted and disillusioned with, with politics and they don't want to vote. People have to continue to vote until we get a government that we, is good for the country, mm -hmm. that is the best thing for our country. I mean, that is how people voted in the past. The people must go out to vote. You, you cannot become disenchanted and disaffected by, 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 by politics and leave in a government that will take your country backwards. And so the people have to be continue to be motivated and agitated to make sure that they get a, 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 a uh, Gentlemen, it's uh, just about uh, 2.32. I want to share a piece of a clip um, from the Honorable Sean K. Richards' broadcast on Facebook last night mm -hmm. and get your take on it. Mm -hmm. Give a listen here to the Honorable Sean K. Richards. headquarters, Bastille. Now that the meeting has concluded, I wish to update you on the status of the talks, our relationship, and the way forward. As you may recall, Dr. Timothy Harris as leader of the People's Labour Party, Mark Brantley as leader of the Concerned Citizens Movement, and I as leader of the People's Action Movement also met here in Bastille last week on Wednesday, 6 April 2022. At that first meeting, we agreed that our discussions would resume, but would be concluded today, Thursday, 14 April. When we met at the first meeting, Pam and CCM made their positions clear on several issues, and we thought that it was both fair and reasonable to give some time to the Prime Minister to consider the matters and to report back to us today. However, while there was some minor progress on a few issues, it was not what the country needed for an urgent resolution. Unfortunately, the gulf between what is required to save the partnership and the preferences of the Prime Minister remain large and troubling. Both the leaders of PAM and CCM presented reasonable proposals that we felt would have adequately addressed important issues of national interest, such as good governance, transparency, and accountability, but it turned out to be a bridge too wide for the Prime Minister to cross. Sadly, this second time around, we still could not see eye to eye on the decisive steps that are needed to ensure that repairs are undertaken to address the broken down trust. Okay. The farmers continued right. to be reasonable. All right, gentlemen, gentlemen, that's a little clip there with the Honorable Sean Carriches on his Facebook page. You now he said that it's a, it's a gap for, too large for the, a bridge too large for the Prime Minister to cross, and that after the meeting, the, the things have come back more troubling than before. How, 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 do you, how do you see this? How do you, what is your take on this trial? Well, we're not seeing eye to eye. The trust is broken down. The road is too wide. All of those are very clear signals of the end. They're not, they're not even subtle. Now, he also mentioned later on in, in the clip that um, he had to meet with his caucus. Yes. And then he's going to get back to the people as to the decision Absolutely. going forward. How do you take that, Big Lies? Well, remember I mentioned that in my opening statement that... <laughs> He he, 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 I think he believes, or he thinks, he's convinced that it is over. And he, he's going back to his people to let them know exactly, because I don't think he wants it to be a, a decision that people say he, he made it by himself. Because I believe he, it's the end.
but he wants to protect his own personal situation and so really it was a party a party decision that we cannot go this way anymore and so let's go back to because remember you know there are some big people within the people's action movement benefiting bigly from this construct of this unity construct and if you pull the plug it means that they may not get a chance to benefit the way they are benefiting and so that is weird because politics is so you, you, you have you have to think about the financiers and who can finance the party. If you call election tomorrow, you think who can finance us? Where we get money from? If we pull the plug on these people who are making money, all these things you have to take into consideration. So he is thinking that boy, I really want to match it up. But if I match it up, will I get the half a million from somebody to campaign? Will this person be upset with me and so forth? And it is sad that politics come down to that issue of how the spoils are going to be affected. But you can see that he's going back for the blessings of his team, of his team to say that it is over. That is how he gets So it. you're thinking that um, elections are inevitable. Um, Sam, do you think people in St. Kitts and Nevis are ready for an election right now? Yeah, people are ready. In, in, in fact, you need, uh, that is what, that's the point I've been making, that what we are having is the regurgitation of what I've been saying at town hall meetings. Mm. To go back to, the, um, to his caucus, it's the same thing. They've been saying the same thing over and over. In fact, he said there in the paper he just made that, it, that the gap is too wide, it's, it's intractable, we can't make up. The Prime Minister said uh, he's not going to surrender his, his responsibility as right. the Prime Minister. We so, got the impression that Sean was asking for too much? Well, well, well not, not that Sean asking too much. What, what Sean, Sean asking for is too much for the Prime Minister. I wouldn't say that he asking for too much. Mm. But the Prime Minister feels that he's asking too much. Mm. And mm. Sean is saying that uh, what they're asking for is going to see what they can get. So they meet it over and over, will not move the process forward. One of the things I heard, Sam, is that mm. Sean wanted to get the Ministry of Finance. I don't know how true that is. I saw a post uh, saying that, and he was something about having control of the CDI. Yeah. Okay. So the Prime Minister is not going to give up those. Well, well you see, uh, if you check, areas. but if you check the uh, the Charles don't record. Mm -hmm. All of those things in the Charles don't record, you know, how the portfolios are going to be allocated. Mm -hmm. It says there that um, that portfolios are going to be allocated after discussion with all the leaders. Right. All these things that, that, that they're talking about in the Charles don't record, you know, so it is clear. And now, and now the, the Prime Minister is coming back to tell you that he has a, a constitutional responsibility. But he was supposed to know that he should have known that before he signed the, 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 the charge on the card. So you, you could see it is deception. But, but Sam, in fairness, if you can say that portfolios would be discussed, mm -hmm. what the law is, and everybody knew it, yeah. that the final decision as to the allocation of portfolio yeah. rests with the Prime Minister. So, so, so why you put that in the charge on the card? Discuss for what? So, no, because you will discuss it. At least, well, that is what they asked for, and that is what he gave them. Remember, he gave them what they asked for so that he could get what he wanted. But, but that's okay. what we're talking about. For example, the deception, so the country should not have been put through that. Yeah, but at the same time, those who may have been deceived, they have chosen to be deceived. I mean, look at the thing now with the, the, the revenue sharing. They're referring to the CBI revenues. The revenue sharing provision in the Constitution refers only to tax revenue, mm -hmm. Section 110. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to apply Section 110, not, not legally necessarily, but in terms of the spirit to that. What they ought to have done, in my opinion, is formalized the Charleston Accord um, and put it into the record of the Cabinet and maybe even adopt it as a parliamentary resolution but that was not done. So Tim's people are saying, well, that ain't what the Constitution say, no. So we had to go by the Constitution. Again, that part of the deception. But these guys allowed themselves to fall into a trap. And you can't tell me that they only... They fall into a trap or they were deceived? I mean, the smart guys, they allowed themselves to fall when into we a had trap. The, uh, when the Constitution was written, there was no CBI. The Constitution was written in 1982. 
came in, we came into in the independent state in 1983. The CBI was 1983. Yeah, or that is why they put it in the Charleston Accord, so that they will capture exactly. a, a portion of the money in addition yeah. to the, surf, the surplus tax revenue. So why is it that thing we, 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 we refer to the, to the Constitution now? That's a red herring. He shouldn't refer to it. Exactly. He should refer to that it. That is the point. But these guys know better because lawyers were involved in the drafting of the Charles. You know, a, a gentleman, I, I don't mean to, to, to mm -hmm. diminish this, but a young man, not a university graduate like us, um, asked me this past week, he says, this Charleston Accord thing, what it really is? I said, well, the Charleston Accord, blah, blah, blah. He said, why, it ain't a Charleston Accord, you know? It's a Charleston Accordion. <laughs> <laughs> he said, because it ain't an old like an accordion, people playing with it. Mm -hmm. And the people of Nevis, expected that the, the provisions of the Charleston Accord would be honored. And it has not been. But in my view, sometimes people are so happy in the moment that they don't think much of the, the possibility that they might be getting deceived. Yeah, but you know what, though? When immunity was campaigning, that was a big part of the discussion, the CBI. Yes. I remember when I didn't understand it, so much. They said that the former government would have created a special vehicle and the, the money in there. They use all kind of terms. Yeah. And bottom line is that they were saying that the CBI should go into the console fund. So part of the advert, I mean the, 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 the campaign they said was that Introducing Nature's Wellness SKN, your one-stop destination for all things health and wellness.